Hey everybody, Mike Wardinsky here, and I've got a quick video on how to focus stack in Photoshop. But before we dive in, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for infield workshops, private lessons, and of course, many how-to articles. Now, before we dive in here, I want to talk a little bit about focus stacking and what it is. Focus stacking is when you take two or more shots at different focal lengths. So in this image, I focused once on the skull and then once more on the background. And if I toggle between these two images, you'll notice that the image shifts just a little bit. And that's because the elements in the lens are shifting when you focus. So you can see I've marked these images with a red box. And to do that, you simply come up to the toolbar. And if you don't see these color labels, head over to the right side and make sure that color label is turned on and then you'll see them. And that's how you can mark your photos. That just makes it easier to know that the two photos are designed to be blended together. Now, before we do our focus stack in Photoshop, I do want to do some very basic edits in Lightroom just to kind of get the image closer to where I want it while I still have access to the raw file. Because once we go into Photoshop, we're going to lose the raw and we'll only have a TIFF at that point or a PSD. So real quick here, I'm going to go over to the highlights, bring those down, maybe bring the shadows up a little bit bring the whites up, bring some contrast in, and pull those blacks down. I might add just a pinch of clarity and a little bit of exposure. And I'll pull the highlights down just a little bit more. And I might go to the tone curve, pop those highlights, and pull the darks down. And now we have a nice contrasty image with a little more color in it. And since I made settings to this image, I need to sync them to this one. So to do that, I'm just going to click right here and I will command click on a Mac or control click on a PC and go ahead and hit sync. And then I'm going to make sure check all is checked and then synchronize the photos. Now at this point, we're ready to blend these two images together. So I'm going to go ahead and control click on a Mac, right click on a PC, edit in, and then I'm going to go down to open as layers in Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and you can see my two layers came in. I can turn them on and off and you can see the image sort of shift just like we were seeing in Lightroom. And before we do our focus stack, we wanna make sure that these are aligned just in case I hit my tripod um, or the, the ball head shifted a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift click on the bottom layer and that selects all of them. I'm gonna go to edit auto align layers. And then when the, you see this dialog box pop up, just make sure you have auto selected and hit okay. So our layers aligned and it looks like we've got a small edge here that you may or may not be able to see in the video, but more or less the images are perfectly aligned. And now we wanna make sure that both of our images are still selected. We're gonna go right back to edit and right underneath auto align layers is auto blend layers. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And you wanna make sure that stack images is selected, not panorama. And I usually leave seamless tones and colors checked and I leave content aware fill unchecked because I don't like Photoshop doing the content aware fill for me. If that's something I wanna to do to my image, I'll do it later on. And besides that, it takes longer to process the focus stack if you turn that on. So I'll go ahead and hit OK now. OK, and that's it. We have our initial focus stack set here. You can see we kind of got some edges along here. That's because we didn't use the content aware fill, um, but that's OK. We can always crop in a little bit or do content aware fill later on. And if you look in the layers panel, you can see what happened. This top image, we're seeing the bottom part of the top image and then the top part of the image below. So to make that make sense, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the bottom layer off and you can see that the background just completely disappeared. That's because the background layer is the one below. Now, once we have our focus stack, we don't need both of these layers. There's really no reason to keep them. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to layer and I'm just gonna flatten the image at this point. This will help save space and it'll also keep your Photoshop interface a little more tidy. Now, whenever you do a focus stack, especially in Photoshop, you do want to zoom in and inspect the edges. Almost always you will find artifacts along the very edge of the frame. And that's partially because those images were shifting a little bit. And so Photoshop can't perfectly blend everything. 
So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna do that Command Plus. I'll zoom in. And you can see right here, right along the edge, I kind of have this artifact. It's sharp here, but not right here. So pretty much always, whenever you do a focus stack, you're gonna have to crop in a little bit tighter than what the initial image size was. So keep that in mind when you're out in the field the shooting, you wanna shoot a little bit wider than what you actually want to include in the frame because you're gonna lose a little bit of those edges. So I'm gonna zoom back out, Command Zero to full screen. And I'm just gonna go ahead and crop this a little bit. So I'm gonna hit the C key to get the crop. And I'm just gonna bring these edges in. And I'm actually gonna keep my ratio set to two, three. Switch that. And I'll hold Option to bring in both edges at the same time. That's Alt on a PC. And once I got my crop, I'll go ahead, actually I think I need to bring that in just a pinch more. And I'll hit return and we have our focus stack set. And I'm just gonna zoom into the bottom to make sure that we got rid of that artifact. We didn't quite get rid of it completely. So again, I'm gonna hit the C key, zoom back out, and I'm just gonna bring that in a little bit more while holding the Option or Alt key, and right there does it. Okay, so now we're ready to either continue editing in Photoshop, or we could go back into Lightroom at this point. So to go back into Lightroom, File, Save. And that's gonna save this file as a TIFF or PSD depending on how you have your Photoshop set up. Either way, both are lossless files and you can continue processing. So let's bop over to Lightroom here. And if I look in the bottom here, you can see this file hasn't quite come over yet. But if, if when I hover over it, you'll see this, it says Edit TIFF. That's my new file. And I'm gonna go ahead and give that a marking. That way I don't get confused since it's still red. I'm gonna go ahead and make that blue. That's kind of my, my code for a TIFF file or PSD. Basically, something that's been edited in another piece of software that is no longer a raw file. And eventually that thumbnail will populate right here. So in a nutshell, that's how you do a focus stack. Now, the closer you have something to your lens, the more you need to focus. So if I was really close to the skull, I might have to focus on the jawbone here, once on the nose, maybe once on the eye, once on the horn, um, once also in the, the front of the skull, and then possibly two or three times into the background as well. It's better to have more frames than what you need than not enough frames. Also not a bad idea to keep your aperture pretty closed down, maybe around F11, F14, F16. That's gonna help ensure that you have enough overlap between your shots and you don't get blurry spots at certain parts of the image. Because if you have a sharp foreground and a sharp background, but a blurry middle ground, it's very noticeable. And you're better off only having the foreground sharp than having a foreground sharp, background sharp, and soft middle ground. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below and go over to naturemike.com. I'll see you in the next video and happy shooting.